Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com and in this tutorial I want to talk about the importance of using luminosity blending mode versus normal when you're doing your flash ambient blend for real estate photography. Now if you're not familiar with the flash ambient blend, I'm going to step through that a little bit, but if you're not familiar with it at all, you might want to check out this video. There's a link up here. You might want to watch that video first or after it's up to you. But I really want to drive home the point of using luminosity. It's something I talk about throughout my books and of course I've got a, a link to my series on real estate photography down in the description here. And especially in the interiors book where I talk about how you use luminosity mode to be able to get the right shadows, the right light, to get the natural look to some degree out of using that ambient layer, but you don't want to use the color out of it. If you're in normal mode and you're blending with normal mode then you're going to be putting some of that color. So let's recap. I'm going to go through a few examples. I'm going to show you why it's so important. It's also going to touch about using then this flash ambient blend. So you actually get to see some of the steps if you haven't seen that video. I'll have other links to other videos as I start talking about that throughout this tutorial. But let's recap real quick before getting into those other examples. So the first thing is, why do we use flash? So we're not using HDR for a big reason. One is that we want to be able, by using flash, to be the dominant light source throughout the entire frame that we're shooting. By being the dominant light source throughout the frame that we're shooting, then we're controlling the white balance. So when you're shooting something on site, when you're shooting an interior of a house, there's all kinds of different white balance going on, all kinds of colors. You have the incandescent lights, fluorescent lights, you've got natural light coming in from outside, and you also have then, when you're shooting ambient, you've got casts coming in from the outside, green from the grass outside, you might have something from the sky, blue also from the sky that will sometimes show up in reflections and all kinds of weird stuff. So if you're really good at HDR, you can sometimes get rid of a lot of that. With flash, it's just an instant. Immediately it goes away because you're shedding 5500 Kelvin. You're controlling the light, you're controlling the color. Now that doesn't mean that you completely get away with all your ambient. There's somewhat of a mix to it, like the two-stop rule I talk about. But basically, once again, to recap the three things that we're really after before getting into these examples. First and foremost is that we want to get rid of the color that we're working with that isn't accurate, things that are from the ambient. Second thing is we want to be able to then overcome the shadows in any uh, areas that may be too dark. So we do want to fill in some of that light and then blend that later with some of the ambient and luminosity mode. And thirdly, we want to be able to get rid of the ambient artifacts. So we don't want to completely knock out all ambient, but we want to make sure that we're the dominant light within the frame so we don't have harsh reflections that are in places also, a lot of glare that might show up, ambient artifacts, so too much light showing up big glowing bulb like from a lamp. But first and foremost, that first item that we're really after here is to get accurate color representation throughout the entire frame by being the dominant light source and thereby being the dominant white balance, thus resulting in accurate colors. So let's recap everything and let's get into the computer here and let me show you some examples of what I'm talking about so we can once again see the importance of using luminosity versus normal, lo normal mode. <laughs> Excuse me. Let's get started. So here is a prime example of an ambient shot that's what I call polluted by color. So you can see here that what color is the wall? If you look in here away from the window, you can see that there's a bit of a beige color. But when you look in here, you can see obviously there's me standing there. You can see my reflection there. Don't worry, that'll be edited out later. But you can see there's a big orange glow coming from the lamp. But that's not all. Look at the wall over here, how green it looks. And it's also green over here. So this is very typical in that if you were to look at this room yourself, your brain would be able to adjust for all the various colors, but the camera doesn't do that. So the camera captures all these various colors that are coming into the room. So very quickly, all that we have to do is then flash. And notice the difference here. Now this is a composite, me standing on one side flashing, me standing on the other side flashing, and then one side's just edited out. And then we do some flash ambient blending with that picture. So the importance here though, you can see, of dominating the frame 
with flash, I'm now creating the dominant white balance and now we've got the correct colors that are going on here. So let's take a look once again. We'll step through then, especially if you haven't seen this done before, but I'll show you the importance of doing that and why we wouldn't use normal mode. So once again, all the geometries have been done, all the things that I talk about in the other videos and throughout uh, the interiors book as well. And we'll just go ahead and we'll edit these as layers in Photoshop. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and first do a composite just so we have the base that we can see with. What would we work with if it was flash? And you've seen me do this before on other recent composites. It's a, it's a great way to evenly light a room. I'm gonna first just turn this layer at the top, which was our ambient shot. Let's just shut that off for now so we can just do this composite real fast. On here, I'll just go layer mask hide. I'll take a brush at 100% flow and then just paint myself out of it so we can get that. Get myself down to a, a smaller flow here and then just blend in the rest of that so we've got now we've got an evenly lit shot okay so that's the evenly lit room still looks a bit flashy so this is why we want to bring some ambient into it now if I were to bring all ambient into it it would look like this we have all that polluted color if I were to add a layer mask to that hide everything and start brushing in some of that immediately I start getting those colors I'm not getting an accurate look to it not at all so let me go ahead and just delete that layer mask. Let's back out of that. Let's delete that layer mask and let's turn this now into luminosity mode. Now that it's in luminosity mode, now we're not going to use all this, but look what happened just by changing the blending layer. This was a uh, mode. This was in normal mode. This is in luminosity. And you can see luminosity preserves the luminance. It preserves the light. That's all it does. It gets rid of all the color. And this is an important thing to remember. It basically, it's not the same as desaturation, although it's very similar in that it throws away all of the color and then preserves the luminance that we have. So if we add a layer mask and hide everything, we can carefully then paint in, like we wanna show some of that light coming in off that lamp. And now that light off that lamp, instead of being you know, predominantly orange, it's predominantly white. If this was in normal mode, then it would be predominantly orange. But going back to luminosity, it's predominantly white. And so the same thing here, if I then paint the wall, and once again, I'm using a low flow brush, by the way, it's about 30%. As I start putting in some of that, we get some nice light coming in from that window across the desk, put a little bit on the doors here, and now we've got something that doesn't look so flashy, and we've got something that is now more accurate too for the color representation. So we can uh, gauge that, what do we need? And of course, I was in that the ambient shot <laughs> reflected in here, so I would just erase myself out of that. I don't need to be in the picture, so I'd just get myself out of that. Or there's a bunch of ways you could do that. But that's the idea behind it, you know, behind getting all that luminance that we want, just in the places that we want. And to me, that would probably be enough to deliver this. Now there's some other things I would do, but let's just go ahead and finish this out by going layer flatten. We can save that and then I could go back in here and add a bump to it, maybe some other edits. And the final product then, once I'm all done, would look like this. Okay, let's move on to then the next example. So this is uh, a room where you think, well, that's gonna be really tough because you've got this wall here that's some strange dark coloring. Yeah, that could be tough. We also have obviously some uh, incandescent light here. And by the way, not all the bulbs are lit. So that was uh, not my fault, but uh, once again, something that could be corrected if we wanted to take enough time, but it's off topic for this video. You can see that the wall then looks like, well, it's probably a beige, you know, it's polluted a little bit with that orange color. And you might think it's beige because you go over into the far room and it's like, well, that kind of looks beige on those walls, but it's not. In fact, the color on these walls is what's known as designer white. Let me show you. Add some light to it and you can see it. Immediately you can see it too. Notice there's a flash in here in the far room. You can see the bloom on it. You can see the color, how different that is here. That's a designer white. It's got a little bit of blue in it compared to when the ambient shot made it look very yellowish. So even in that case where we weren't massively polluted by um, the flash, uh, excuse me, by just the ambient light, the flash was able to correct for that. So once again, here was a composite. And now I've also got a pretty good color representation of what was here. And then of course, lastly, I would probably uh, throw in a window pole like I did here. So if we were to take in all those layers, we'll do the same thing again and take a look at the difference here. 
of what we've got when it comes to then normal versus the luminosity mode. Normal mode, the only time I recommend using it is if you have to do some type of repairs. I talk about that in the advanced editing book, and you've also seen other videos here on my channel where I'll use it for wood and leather because the colors won't matter as much and they tend to be also richer. So anyways, we'll take this layer and we'll turn it into luminosity mode. And as soon as we do, you can see that the colors go away and we get to see the true colors of what we were shooting underneath. So that's great. Now we're in luminosity mode, but layer mask hide. Let's finish off this composite by hiding myself, by painting myself out of this picture with the other one. There, I've got an evenly lit room. That looks good. Um, and now I can add in the ambient where I want. So now I might want to say, well, let's light up those lights a little bit. Um, maybe up over here, we get some natural shadows kind of going on. Get this room up here in the far end lit. And then we get some naturalness kind of going on. And that's good. So that would be probably fine. Wouldn't add a whole lot to it because this corner right here is dark since there's not a window. I might try to light those lights up just a little bit more, but really not doing me a whole bunch of favors. So I might just go ahead and just keep that off and that would be fine. Uh, the window pull itself I might add in there. And of course then I could fix this patch over here in the far room from that bloom, whatever I'm doing. And of course if you haven't seen a window pull like this done before, you just pull up to the top. It's overexposed for a reason because you go into darken mode, layer mask hide, and then you can either paint it or use uh, like in this case a polygon tool to just go ahead and make that all of a sudden reveal itself by just cutting it out painting that portion in there so anyways once again if we were to use though that layer down here this is our ambient layer in luminosity mode if we were to use it in normal mode we'd immediately get these awful colors. You can see the weird colors starting to come through. It's not what we want. We want luminosity mode so that like this, we just get the light out of it. And of course, then once this was all done, I added a little bit of extra shadow into the back here in post. The final product looks like this. Okay, so let's move on then to the last example that I have here just to try to really drive home this point. So this is a case where you've got a lot of ambient artifacts going on. So by looking at this, you'd think that almost the walls were some type of orangish color. Well, they're not. Once we light it up, we can see that we've got nice gray walls. So this is another composite. And once again, I did the, the window poles for this also. So if we take a look, taking these uh, files then into Photoshop as layers. We can then once again see that difference by using luminosity mode, not normal blending mode. Normal blending mode, if you're using that and you're, something else is going wrong, I'm gonna talk about that once I get done with this example on some things you can take a look at. But first, let's just drive home this point with one last example here as this is loading up and I'm gonna use then this uh, ambient layer on top as just luminosity mode. Immediately look at that gray start to show through. So this is without it, it's all orange. Here it's gray because I lit it, I lit it properly. So I've got this uh, me going on here doing a Statue of Liberty. I'm just gonna hide myself, paint out here. I've got the, uh, my here I'm holding my light stand. And I'll just edit myself out with a brush blend that in with a lower flow brush. Now I've got a fairly even lit room, enough to where I can brush in then some of this luminosity where I want, right? I don't have to then worry about the colors. I can decide how much luminosity I want in a certain place. And all I'm doing with is I'm just playing with light. I'm not worried about colors. It's all about light. Now, if you notice, there is still some orange over here on this far wall, right? So if I were to zoom in over here, you can see there's still some orange. That didn't go away because there was still some there. There was so much ambient light coming in that some of that was there. So if I wanted to get rid of that also, you've seen me do this in, in other tutorials and also in the advanced editing book, where I'm just gonna go ahead and draw a polygon around here to get rid of that color cast. I know that ceiling's white, so I can just go around that white ceiling real quick. And then if I were to uh, just feather that selection just a little bit by let's say about five pixels just to really blend it. And then if I were to go ahead and put in a, uh, an adjustment layer and we'll go with a uh, 
hue saturation layer where we drop the saturation down, then of course we get rid of that. And when we blend it all together with the window poles, then the final product looks like this. So that covers the basics of why we need luminosity mode versus normal mode, but then what happens if you really aren't getting the right colors when you're using your flash? So a couple things could be going on. One, like I showed in my last video just here last week or so, you can see it prior to this one on my channel, um, I talk about how the debayering of Lightroom from RAW files will sometimes give you an inaccurate representation of white balance of colors also of your luminance. So there's no way really around that unless you use OEM software first. That's also why I do that for exteriors. I've mentioned that many times. So you might want to recheck that video. That could be something going on. So something with the white balance. It could also be possibly the auto white balance in your camera is not detecting something properly. So it could be a white balance issue. Easy way to test that, like I showed in the last video, you can go through a complicated steps of trying to find the gray threshold or try clicking around on white spots like uh, maybe the, uh, the molding on floor or maybe the uh, trim around windows, anything that might be white, just to see if it really is a white balance issue. The other thing that could be happening is you could be getting color casts. I've got a video on that on this channel that shows how to get rid of that as well. There is one other thing too, and I shared and talked about it on Facebook today, and it's something Rich Baum had pointed out, that some people were having a problem on uh, using Photoshop prior to version 20.0.1. Versions prior to that of the 2019 release of Photoshop were having a problem with some of the blending mode on the layers where you had to use legacy compositing when you were in your performance settings. And if you have that checked, if you're seeing that problem, you can check that checkbox, it might solve it. But that's a really big overline problem. You'd be seeing all kinds of other problems associated with that with your colors when you're doing blending modes. So basically, you should be able to, if you're seeing that their colors are way off, there's probably something else going on, either debayering problem that you're getting from Lightroom, which you can easily correct and automate that, like I showed in the last video. You might be getting color casts, so you're flashing improperly, in some cases, probably using too much flash. The, and of course, that can be corrected in post two, or you've got some version of Lightroom prior to 20.0.1, which might be having some of those issues. Anyways, I hope this video is useful for you and that you can use some of this in your photography as well. If you did like this video, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. It won't cost you anything, and as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.